Okay guys, what's going on? It's your boy Salvaje from the Salvaje Cartel. So I'm bringing you guys a really special video today. So this is a Widowmaker coaching session from a guy that has 377 hours on Widowmaker. Uh, I'm not gonna be focusing too much on the aim aspect of things because he has 377 hours of Widowmaker. Like his aim is pretty decent. Maybe he was just having a bad game. However, he does have some bad habits that he uh, needs to improve on. And of course, this is a brand new map. This is Rialto. I want to bring you guys this video because like that you guys know better positioning when it comes down to this map and of course like that my friend Monta you know he knows better positioning when it comes down to this map obviously since this is a brand new map he's not going to know all of the good spots for Widowmaker unlike me since I've been playing the map literally non-stop since it first came out and you know that's just the point that, that's just the point that I want to make like I just want to let you guys know as I'm coaching him as I'm pointing out some of his mistakes right like you know I'm not saying what he's doing is wrong all right, I'm just saying how I would do things differently and uh, keep in mind like I'm just pointing out some of his mistakes so that we can all learn from it so quite honestly I wasn't even going to do this VOD review I was just you know spectating him and recording his own gameplay so that I can watch it and I can learn from it but then I realized wait a minute I can just do a coaching video on this so that more people can learn from it uh, so we're definitely gonna get started right here um, he goes for the grapple shot here which is very effective I would definitely pull off a grapple shot there. All right, he shoots. Okay, so let's just take a look at what he did right there. He shoots the Reinhardt Barrier. He knows that there's a Widowmaker. All right, um, in the back of the Reinhardt, it, it, on the back of the Reinhardt Barrier because of the bullet trail that Widowmaker leaves out. So I know there's a Widowmaker behind the Reinhardt Barrier somewhere, somewhere around here. By the way, if you guys know what's the paint tool that a, a lot of these uh coaches use please let me know in the comment section so that i can like you know draw circles and stuff by the way i would really appreciate that there's a widowmaker behind the reinhardt barrier now what i would do is i would come over here to this high ground if a diva jumps me i can just run back and basically just you know jump uh, back through the balcony okay uh, however you can also say that this is a good position as well because if the diva jumps you you know over here you can just grapple onto the high ground over there okay uh, remember guys, so one of the things that I noticed throughout this gameplay is that Monta's positioning really just basically let the, you know, let, let this game to an L, okay? Like if his positioning was way better, he would have been able to get better picks, all right, uh, faster picks, which would mean that they would move the payload faster, they would have more time, all of that good stuff. Like a lot of Widowmaker players out there, guys, you know, they think like they have so many hours of Widowmaker and then they, they're like, you know, I'm not being as effective. I'm not being as good. It's my aim. My aim isn't good enough. It's not your aim, actually. What, what, what it actually is, is, well, some bad habits of aiming, I guess, but also your positioning, right? Like your positioning has to be on point with Widowmaker if you want to be really, really effective over. Even though you might have terrible aim, if your positioning is good, like you can still be pretty effective. Okay. Although aim is a part of the, of the game. Okay. So again, like I'm shooting the Reinhardt. I see this Lucio. We're gonna take a look at his Lucio. He basically tracks. You know, he, he, he was he was having a bad day of aiming, okay? But anyways, now I see the Widowmaker. The Widowmaker shot him. All right, so right here, he's gonna fall back and take some cover. And we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at this encounter real quick, all right? So we're gonna take a look at that again because I wanna point something out to you guys, right? He sees the Widowmaker, he shoots him, all right? So, okay, so that's a huge no-no right there. All right, so that's a huge no-no, and that's why I want to talk about it. So right there, he basically just panicked in the Widow Duel, and the shots that he was taking at the enemy Widowmaker just weren't centered shots. So what I mean by centered shots, guys, is when you guys see a Widowmaker, you want to aim at her, and when you're going to shoot her, like the final blow, like the, the blow that's going to kill her, you want to take a centered shot. In other words, you want to be standing still. Okay, my friend Ayla once told me, why would I want to be standing still when I'm taking a shot against another Widowmaker? Well, you want to be standing still because you want your shot to be as most accurate as possible. And you also want to be standing still is because when the Widowmaker is going to aim at your head, of course, the right thing to do is, of course, to crouch so that you can dodge the headshot. Okay, so as you guys, and you guys are going to see, you know, throughout the gameplay, like, look, as Manta shoots, right, he just like moves too much, right? And basically that movement, you know, the constant movement that he takes into consideration when he shoots, it's basically what's messing up his aim quite a bit. See, right here, he also did another mistake. This other Widowmaker is as nervous as he is, okay? And he hit the other Widowmaker once, I believe. We're going to take a look at that again. Because, of course, we want to learn as much as possible. Like, he hit her once, right? All he has to do is basically just stand still. 
and he just charge up a shot. He has the advantage. Okay, so if an enemy Widowmaker is aiming at you, she has the advantage on you because she has her scope charged in. But the enemy Widowmaker was jumping, all right, because he was trying to dodge him. If you see that happening to you, the enemy Widowmaker is jumping, just scope in and wait for her to stop moving so that you can shoot her. Because your scope is going to be at 100% charge, and as she's jumping, when she starts aiming, her scope isn't going to be at a range that can kill you. That's why you want to take a centered shot. That's why you don't want to be moving. That's why you want to go for the final blow. And he had to go for a body shot there, not a headshot. Uh, right here, he, he panics, and he kind of makes like this mistake. Remember, guys, when it comes down to Widow duels, commit to them. Because if you don't commit to the Widowmaker duel, you're not going to get better at Widowmaker duels. All right, and I'm, again, I'm not hating on him. I'm just saying, you know, that's just something that he can apply to his own gameplay to be better. This is some on-point positioning right here, okay? He takes out this Widow. I mean, he takes out the Diva, and he takes out this Widowmaker as well. All right, where's my cursor at? Okay, so right here, this is also a really, really good example of positioning, all right? He knows that his team is pushing, so he's going to be in a position where he can see his team, and he can see his teammate. Uh, I mean, the enemy team and his teammates as well. All right, look at Reinhardt. He's distracted, all right? He's basically one of the easiest targets to hit right now. Right there, I would basically just focus on Reinhardt because the other people are hiding. Okay, so right there, he sees the Widowmaker. And he wants to go for the Widowmaker. So I guess you could say, since my team is doing really well, since my team just got a Reinhardt, you know, since my team just picked off the Reinhardt, and we have a Fera, I believe, I would go for the Widowmaker. So we're going to go for the Widowmaker. You know, Manta's going to go for the Widow. This is an easy shot. In other words, an easy shot is when the person has no idea that you're about to shoot them. And he messes up right here. Alright, so we're going to take a look at that again. And as you guys can see, as he's going to take his shot, he's going to be moving. Look at that. Like, as he took his shot, he was still moving forward. Remember, guys, one of the, one of the biggest bad habits of Widowmaker is moving and shooting at the same time. Like, I would probably say you want to shoot at the enemy Widow, specifically when it's an easy shot. Okay, when it's an easy shot, the person doesn't know where you're at. Stay standing still, all right? Make sure that you're in a centered sort of position where you can take an accurate shot, okay? Because so, look, right here, he's moving forward, and he kind of messes up. Now, keep in mind, he was having a bad day of aiming, which happens a lot to Widowmaker, specifically me. You know, sometimes I just have days where I'm just, you know, not really aiming that well. But we're going to take a look at this encounter again. Alright, so right there, you know, the Widowmaker sort of panics. Alright, he panics as well. And the Pharah ends up taking out the Widowmaker. So how could have, how could have we approached that encounter better? First of all, crosshair placement. His crosshair is over here. Alright, his crosshair needs to be over here, around the head of the enemy Widow, so that, of course, you can get an easier headshot on her. That's another bad habit when it comes down to Widowmaker. Crosshair placement. If your crosshair placement isn't great, you're not going to be able to be as effective with Widow. So right there, uh, you know, the Widowmaker uh, peeps out, throws a Venom Mine, gets eliminated by the Pharah. So I guess you could say we can move on from that encounter. What I would have done at that position, if I would have, I would have had my crosshair, you know, on, you know, basically aiming towards her head. And basically, she would have peeked. If she would have peeked, I would have seen her first before she sees me. Because that's how peeking works in Overwatch. If you guys want me to go more in depth into that, let me know in the comment sections. Uh, and I'll cover it in a future video. Okay, so this is a really good position. At least at the moment. Alright. So, the reason why I say this is a good position is because the enemy team is over there, right? They're sort of like in this area right here. You know, you want to take a couple of shots. Alright. So, right here, you want to take a couple of shots of the enemies, right? And then you want to switch positioning because now this position is no longer good. All right. The enemy team thinks that you're in this position or they have a general idea. As you guys can see right here. Okay. But you're not really doing anything here. Like what he should have done is come on to this spot. Like this little area right here. This is where he should have actually been shooting the people like this area right here. Right. But basically just looking backwards. All right, this is the position that he should have taken where he can see his team and the enemy team as well. But it actually, we're going to fast forward a bit. All right, yeah, we were like about here. So he, he's shooting. He doesn't have anyone to shoot. Like, you guys have to remember, when it comes down to positioning with Widow, if you can't shoot anyone, if you don't have anyone to shoot, if you don't have a good angle, that means you need to change positions, okay? All right, so I'm going to teach you guys another tip. The Widowmaker is right there. Maybe he didn't see Manta, okay? But if there's one thing that I always like to do, 
you know, if the Widowmaker knows my position, is I, I want to switch positioning. Now, of course, he has the Orisa barrier there. He has no reason to move, you know, because he has a barrier. He no longer has a barrier, however. All right. So if I would have lost my barrier there, I would have gone, gone up forward to this area right here. Because if I know a position of where a Widowmaker is, you know, I'm going to change positions and I'm going to aim towards where I know the enemy Widowmaker is at. Okay, so if a Widow sees you, you have to change positions because most likely she's going to change positions herself and aim where you're at. It's basically kind of like tricking the enemy Widow. So we're going to keep on moving forward with the VOD review. Uh, so far, he's doing a pretty okay job. You know, except that, of course, you know, sometimes his positioning was questionable. He did take out the enemy Widowmaker, and as you guys saw... Look, let's take a look at this shot again. All right. He's moving, he's moving, but here he's going to be standing still. And then he's going to shoot the Widow. He was moving just a little bit, though. All right, and again, that's still something that I don't encourage, okay? Because you want your shots to be as accurate, specifically in these Widow duels, okay? But he wasn't moving as much as in the previous shot, so he was able to take her out. Like, if you watch, watch a lot of Overwatch League, Linkster does that a lot. Like, every time Linkster takes a shot, like, 90% of the time, 85% of the time, he doesn't fucking move. Let's keep going. This is a really good position because, of course, you can take out the enemy Widow. However, I want to ask myself the question, you know, this question, right? Uh, right there in that encounter. Am I going to be able to help out my teammates and take out the enemy widow? And the other question that I want to ask myself is, am I able to help out my teammates and the enemy widow isn't going to be able to do, any, to do anything because of her bad positioning? Okay, so right there, he took out the enemy widow. That's what he wanted to do. You know, he wanted to take her out when she wasn't aware of it. That's a really smart idea. However, you can also argue that he should have been in this sight line and he would have been able to still take out the enemy widow and, of course, help out his team when it comes down to... Taking them out. So, perfect use of the grapple. I don't really have anything to say there. Alright. Okay, so this is some post commentary right now. And something that I forgot to mention in the VOD review. So, this is a perfect example of Monta moving so much that he's not able to get any accurate shots. Keep in mind, guys. If you have a barrier in front of you, Widowmaker, you guys can be in a position where you're stationary. Okay? And you're not moving as much. And you're taking a lot of centered accurate shots. So right here, right, he was moving so much that because he wanted to get the jumping shot on the Hanzo, all right, he, like he just wasn't able to do it because he was moving too much. But look, this is a perfect example of him constantly moving, right? So right here, right, he wants to take a shot on the junk rat, but look, he's still moving. He's still moving around as he's scoped in, and yet he misses a very critical shot on the junk rat instead of just standing still, taking the time to aim at the head, and then go for the headshot. Remember, guys, you need to take center shots. The moment you start taking shots, you're going to realize that you're way more accurate than what you actually thought with Widow. He basically, he went into that position knowing, what's my escape route if things go wrong? And he executed on it perfectly. I mean, he does have 377 hours of Widowmaker, guys. Like, you know, c keep that in mind. All right, so right here, you know, they're basically kind of winning the team fight. Uh, and this is something that I noticed that Monta sort of like likes to do a lot. You know, he sometimes he likes to stay a little bit back. He's one of those defensive Widowmakers. Right here, right, right here, he does a perfect, perfect job. He knows that the Widowmaker has his positioning. So what he's going to do is he's going to change positions. But if we take a look at this shot right here, this wasn't a centered shot. Why was it not a centered shot? Because he was moving. Look, he's moving, right? So since he's moving, every time he shoots, he just can't hit a lot of accurate shots. Let's go back a little bit. Right there, as you guys can see, he just couldn't hit it. If he was standing still, when he would have taken the shot, he would have probably landed the shot. Well, that's the thing about Widow, right? Like, you, you just can't wait for, like, you, you just can't take only perfect shots. You know, that's something that you guys need to keep in mind, obviously. Okay, so positioning comes into position, uh, com comes into place here. Instead of, uh, you know, me coming up here, I would have gone to the top left side. Uh, because basically I have a little bit more protection, but this is also you know a good area as well You could definitely argue that as well All right, he goes for the Widowmaker Okay, so obviously Widowmaker's top priority is to take out the enemy Widowmaker All right, uh, this was a really good play by him However, you could have you know, you could also say since the Widowmaker is distracted Okay, so I'm back with some more post commentary and um, This is yet another example of Manta just moving way too much with Widowmaker. Okay, so look, right here, he could have just moved to the side, you know, stand still, 
Oh, shoot the widow, but of course he couldn't. I don't blame him. He was being spammed by junk rat mines. So, you know, maybe his aim was a little bit shaky here. Okay, but right here, I want you guys to take a look that as he is going to shoot the enemy widow again, he is moving. The enemy widow doesn't know your position. This is an easy shot. You should be able to land this shot. But since he's moving to the left, he overshots. Remember, guys, stay still. Take those center shots, and you're going to be more accurate. And not basically paying attention to you, that you could have taken out the junk rat. However, if I... If it was me, I would have probably taken out the enemy widow. I, I I see that the enemy widow, you know, I see the enemy widow thanks to the Sonic arrow that Hansel has. All right, so I see a baby bitch. You know what I see? You know what I do when I see a baby bitch? I run away. Those things are literally impossible to hit. Like I, I don't even I don't I don't even uh, frustrate myself too much with it. All right, it's all about positioning here. There's uh, one big mistake that he did here. You want to use your uh, environment to your advantage. All right, and Rialto lets you do that a lot. So what right here, what he should have done is he should have grappled up, uh, do a, done a grapple shot from this area. Basically get like a view of the, you know, of sort of like the fight and how the fight is looking. And uh, maybe if uh, he would have seen the enemy widow, he could have also had a chance to snipe her. But, you know, that's just a small mistake that, you know, I guess you could say it's not as a big deal. So right here we see him shooting again. And as you guys can see, I want you guys to pay close attention. Every time he shoots, he's moving. All right, look, he's moving right here. Why are you moving? There's no reason to move. All right, he's still moving after he's shooting the Bridget. If you're in a good centered position, you don't really need to move. So right there, what do I mean by that, by the way? If you're in a good centered position, what I mean by that is if you're in a position where you're taking an easy shot, in other words, a shot where, you know, the enemy team just isn't really aware of you. They're not basically trying to dodge you. If you're in a position like that, guess what? You don't have to be constantly moving, all right, because you're not in danger. You can take your time to take those accurate shots. All right, he got taken out by the enemy widow. All right, so the be the best thing he could have done there is maybe done a jump shot and then aim. But the enemy widow knew his position, right? He was basically aiming. He had the advantage. So what he could have done there is he could have gone for a grapple shot or basically just switch his position. He could have gone to this upper area right here. But keep in mind, you know, that would have been, that, that could have easily been something that I would have done. All right. Like, I only know that what he could have done better because of the mistake that he did. And, you know, now I'm able to see how he could have done things better. Okay. So this, I, I really like this part. He sees that there's a tracer behind him. Tracer is a big deal when it comes down to Widowmaker. All right. Obviously, you want to take out the tracer. So let's just take a look at the time, right? So it's at 4... 46 and he sees the tracer but if we keep going forward he's still concentrated on the tracer he wasted 45 seconds you know just aiming towards that tracer all right now he's taking place in a team fight and he's still moving as he shoots his team is doing a really good job he sees the tracer okay and we'll look at this look at this guys this is one of the tips that i shared with you guys on my three critical tips against every single hero with widowmaker when it comes down to the offense category Make sure that you're fighting a tracer in a centered corridor. All right, that you basically have her in the center of your crosshairs. And let's just let's just point something out real quick that he's doing really really well. The guy has three almost 400 hours of widow. Obviously, you you know you would think he's doing this right. Crosshair placement. He places the crosshair very very close to the head, and he's able to take it out. It wasn't as near to the head, but it, it was still pretty good. He goes for a grapple shot there. You know what could he have done better on that grapple shot? Right, let, let's let's take a look at it. He could have spent a little bit more time aiming, but then again, grapple shots are kind of complicated sometimes. So I, I, I don't really blame him for messing that up. Okay, so right here, he's not doing anything. All right, you want to be aggressive here. All right, you want to take out the enemy widow. So instead of being like behind the Orisa barrier, I'm, I'm a very aggressive widowmaker at times. All right, because you have to know when you're going to be aggressive and when you're going to be defensive. Okay, so right there you know there was basically no targets that were a threat to you so when there's no targets that are a threat to you you basically want to change your position because it gives you a better opportunity look at this freaking rocket flail thingy dude it's so ginormous you know there's no one that's being aggressive towards you there's no one that's focused on you so that's your opportunity to basically get some good positioning and take some nice centered shots basically shots that are very accurate basically easy shots also the tracer is behind her now all right, this is obviously not a good thing because Tracer annoys the hell out of Widowmaker. So, I want to point something out that he's doing here in this part. 
So he has how long is this video so far? 17 minutes, but it doesn't matter because it's, it's it's just really really educational. All right, so right here he's just spending too much time being scoped in, and he just doesn't really have a general understanding of what's going on around him when it comes down to awareness. So as this game just continues. And just goes on you guys are gonna see like he doesn't really leave this position which is okay it's a brand new map all right but look this is a really good idea of you know being aggressive he could have easily moved in there you know earlier and then he would have had an escape route with his grappling with his grappling hook all right so the Widowmaker isn't in a position that you can kill her that well he's playing uh, you know around the Orisa barrier he's playing very defensively right now and something that I found out when it comes down to playing Widowmaker is sometimes playing defensively is not a good idea. Like, I'd rather be aggressive and get two picks than be defensively and not get any picks. Like, if, I, if I'm aggressive, I get two picks and I die, okay, honestly, I'm quite happy for it because I know maybe my team is going to be able to wipe out the other four people because of the two picks. So, right there, you know, uh, he could have gone to this area right here, okay, since, you know, basically uh, the Roadhog basically knows that he's lurking around this area. And the Widowmaker is probably aiming somewhere around here. He could have gone to this area, taken out the enemy Widow. Okay, but look, we got a Tracer over there. You know, we got a D.Va. Basically, the enemy team is playing very aggressively. So, they're going to basically lose this fight because of it. Alright, so we're going to keep fast forwarding here. You know, so right there I see a D.Va. I would have pursued that D.Va. She was just way too low. That mini health pack isn't going to do shit. And if you saw my critical tips on D.Va. Look, this is a perfect example of playing aggressively. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Waiting for the perfect moment to take out the D.Va as she's getting into the mech. That was perfect. You know, that's one of my critical tips that I pointed out in my three critical tips against Widow. So right here, look, look, look. So right here, there's chaos going on. One of the best things about Widowmaker. When there's chaos going on, you want to take advantage of it. When there's chaos going on, it means that you can have, you know, you can basically almost take your time to get in a good position so that you can take a couple of easy shots and, of course, shots that are very accurate. All right, so I guess you could say they won, right? Like, when I was seeing this, I was like, they won. They won. But you know why they didn't win? Because of positioning. Okay, so right here, you know, like, the enemy team just, you know, is pushing. You know, like, uh, I believe his Pharah gets taken out. His Orisa also gets taken out, I believe. Oh, no, she basically just backs away. Okay, the entire team basically came out. You know, it's a Rialto. It's a new map. Not a lot of uh, people know how to play it. I guess you could say you can also blame his team because this team just wasn't playing that aggressively. All right. And that's just something that I really, really want to point out. Look, what I would have done here, because, you know, we, we just can't predict, like, the perfect, perfect, uh, you know, the, the perfect situation. But I would have gone towards the left. I would have gone towards the left because my team is literally in the center of the payload. So everyone's going to be sort of, like, focus firing on my team. So since I'm on the left, since I'm in a position where the enemy team doesn't know where I'm at, I can take out the healers. Or I can take out the DPS. So the enemy team has less damage to deal with. So right here we have a D.Va. You know, she's basically on the left. Okay, and right here, he just backs away. Like, he just lets this Pharah get bitch slapped. You know, instead of, like, maybe backing away, trying to, you know, take out a Tracer, trying to do some damage, you know. Remember, if you're doing damage with Widowmaker, you can get your Infrasight. Right? So, right here, they have Infrasight. So, obviously, there's really nothing much that you can do. If you're going against another enemy Widow, and the enemy Widow has Infrasights, you're kind of fucked. Alright, so, he, he, obviously, that's a tip that I pointed out against whole hog and uh he loses okay so obviously his team was kind of lacking when it comes down to the pushing department a little bit but i still think one of the reasons why he lost this match is because of his positioning you know if his positioning would have been better on this last part maybe he could have been able to do better he was having a sort of like an off day when it comes down to aiming as well but uh that's pretty much it for this widowmaker coaching video guys uh 400 hours with widowmaker um, and of course there are still a lot of things to improve on uh, I mean I have about what maybe 300 hours or so close to 300 hours on Widowmaker and I still need to improve on a lot of things but again remember you know I want to make this video for educational purposes not hating on Monta or nothing we're just taking a look at his mistakes we're taking a look at what he did wrong so that we can learn from it I hope you guys learned something new from this video and of course make sure that you subscribe to the video and make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you guys are interested in more great content see you guys in the next one and peace out I hope this video helped you guys out